everyone, and welcome to another day of Headline Books Authors as part of our Headline Books Christmas Extravaganza on Zoom. Again, we are doing this in response to the current pandemic and all of our shows being canceled and not being able to be together, and Headline Books is really like a family, so we've missed seeing everyone, so we decided that obviously, like everybody else in the world right now, Zoom is the next best thing, so here we are. <laughs> And we are so excited to be sharing our authors and their stories with you um, this week. Today is the last day of our conference, but if you missed anything, you can watch the replays of every single session here on our Facebook page. We also have a Zoom Into Books YouTube channel, so you can subscribe to that. And we will be uploading all of the videos from our conference this week um, onto our YouTube channel beginning on December 1st. So there's lots of ways that you can rewatch. There's also links here in the Facebook videos um, for the books that we've been discussing each session. And there's also contact information for the author. So if you, again, if you missed anything, um, there's always, there's always a way with Facebook. So today we have three children's book authors with us that we are very excited to chat with. We have Grant Malloy Smith, who is a singer, songwriter, and an author. We have Colleen Driscoll, who is one of our amazing authors of a series of books and a musician herself. And we have Diana Kishner Walker, who I've personally had the pleasure of working with on several books. So we're extremely excited to welcome all three of these authors today. And we are going to kick things off with Diana Kishner Walker reading her newest book. Welcome, Diana. Hi, thank you. Benvenuti. Yes, yes. Of course, we have to incorporate the Italian <laughs> here. Yes. My, <laughs> my books all have an Italian American theme. Um, and this one is about this one is about um, the Christmas feast, a fishy tale, and it's about our pretty much our Christmas Eve. We have seven different kinds of fish every Christmas Eve. It's been tradition since I was a, since I was oh I can't remember when it wasn't, and we continue this tradition on in my family. Um, I'd like to first read to you the dedication page. This book is dedicated to Father Chris Turner and in memory of Father Benedict Kappa. I would also like to dedicate this book in memory of a very special uncle, Joseph Alessio. This will be our very first Christmas Eve that we will not be able to share our talk, hugs, and special Italian foods. My family continues to celebrate each Christmas Eve with the Feast of the Seven Fishes. At the time of this printing, our world as we know it is in crisis. I hope this story brings to light the true meaning of hope, family, and a community coming together to help each other in a great time of need. Bon Natale. Benny and Turner were cousins who lived in a small fishing village in Italy. Their papas were brothers, and for generations, the families had lived side by side in the same two houses. Each day, Benny, whose real name was Bernardo, and Turner, who was nicknamed because he got to turn the wheel in the fishing boat, went to school and then to the sea to fish. While their papas were out to sea, they patiently waited on the shore with their fishing bowls to be picked up. Big smiles appeared on their faces when they saw the family boat coming close to the shore. They boarded the boat with their papas and threw their lines into the sea. Fishing was a family business. It not only provided many tasty meals, but it was also a busy business in the market square. Every Sunday after church, both families took the fish to the market to be sold. There was more than enough to feed the whole village. During the Christmas season, there was even more fish to be caught and sold in the market for the Feast of the Seven Fishes on Christmas Eve. And on one of the pages there, you'll see some of the um, fish that we have on Christmas Eve, the squid, the calamari, clam, shrimp, lobster, and the bacala, which is caught. The feast had always been a Christmas tradition for many families in the Italian village. On Christmas Eve, they celebrated with a huge meal, which included seven different kinds of fish. But one Christmas season, 
Turner's papa became ill. He was not able to help catch the fish and Benny's papa hurt his leg. So he wasn't able to fish either. Benny and Turner decided it was up to them to take the boat out to sea alone or without permission and catch the fish for the feast. While on the boat, they cast their fishing lines and threw out nets, just like their papas. But then the storm came. The boat began to rock. The rain and snow fell so hard they could not see each other. They could not fish. They were cold and wet, scared and hungry. How would they get home on this Christmas Eve? They knew that by now their mamas, papas, and all of the people of the village would be worried. They were in so much trouble. Benny and Turner held each other tight as they began to shiver, then cry. All of a sudden, they saw a very bright light in the sky. They thought it was coming from the lighthouse where the old lady Lucia lived, but even the lighthouse was dark. It seemed to calm the storm. Benny looked up and pointed to the sky. My dear cousin, it's a star. It's guiding us. It warmed their cold, shivering little bodies. They forgot how hungry they were. They were now able to see the shore and all of the villagers waiting, some with blankets to welcome them from the storm. Turner's dad was there on crutches, and Benny's dad was there in a chair wrapped with many blankets. Benny thought, oh no, Papa is too ill, too ill to be out in the storm. As they pulled up alongside the shore, everyone began to cheer. Their mamas wrapped them in blankets. They heard one of the villagers say, now we will feast on this blessed Christmas Eve. How? Turner thought out loud. We have no fish. We could not save Christmas Eve. It is ruined. Benny answered as he looked around the floor of the fishing boat, um, Turner? The boat is full of fish. The villagers enjoyed the feast all together in the town hall. They could not have asked for more. Benny's papa announced, Benny and Turner, we are so happy you are safe. But you must understand on this stormy night that Christmas Eve will come with or without the feast. If you are ever in trouble again, and you better not be, the Christmas star will guide you every night, not just on Christmas Eve. Music played and the fish began. At midnight, everyone went to church together. Benny and Turner never took the boat out without their papas again. Bonifesta, which means happy festival. On the last two pages of this book, um, there is a recipe for the bacala and the cod. There's also a recipe for the calamari. And these two recipes, I'm not gonna read you the recipes because I know you'll wanna purchase this book to get those two family recipes. But I would like to read you one more thing. Feast of the Seven Fishes. Italians celebrate the Feast of the Seven Fishes traditionally on Christmas Eve. The ancient tradition of eating fish on Christmas Eve goes all the way back to the Roman Catholic custom of not eating meat on the eve of certain holidays, including Christmas. The beginning of the Feast of the Seven Fishes started in southern Italy. This area, which is surrounded by a beautiful coastline, is known for its seafood for generations. Many people fished there because they could not afford a lot of other food. Italian immigrants brought the tradition to America and it is still celebrated today. Some of the fish that is prepared includes fried calamari, anchovies, sardines, whiting, lobster, and shrimp. Sometimes even eel is eaten. Another is bacala or the cod. But the most important ingredient, of course, for any Italian meal is being surrounded by family and friends. I hope you've enjoyed the Feast of the Seven Fishes. Thank you so much, Diana. That was great. You're welcome. 
All right, next up we have Colleen Driscoll, who is going to talk a little bit about her series and the book that she's going to share today. Welcome, Colleen. Thank you, Ashley. How are you? Good, good. It's good to see you again. Thanks. I'm excited about Piper the Elf to read today. I am um, an award-winning author of the Piper the Elf series of books. There's four books currently out, and they're all available on Headline Books and Amazon and also my webpage. And there is a Piper the Elf coloring book and activity book for children as well. So the idea that I had for Piper the Elf came from one night about 10 years ago when I was sick in bed and I missed my Christmas. And when I woke up and started feeling better, I thought to myself, what do the elves do the rest of the year? And the idea of Piper the Elf began in my head. So I'd like to go ahead and start reading Piper the Elf Rides a Reindeer. Piper the Elf Rides a Reindeer. One cold morning, Piper the Elf woke up early to help Santa feed the reindeer grazing in the corral by the barn. Look, Santa, she said, pointing to a small reindeer with stubby antlers. We have a new reindeer. Santa walked over and smoothed the reindeer's fur. How did this little fellow get here? Piper fed the new visitor a handful of moss and carrots from the bucket while Santa studied him. I've never seen such gentle eyes, Santa said. They sparkle. The reindeer nuzzled his nose against Piper's neck. Where did he come from, she asked. I'm not sure. There are many herds of reindeer around the North Pole, Santa said. Piper mounted the reindeer. The animal stomped his front hoof and arched his back until Piper fell in the snow. Ouch, she said, rubbing her backside. Santa patted her shoulder. I don't think he wants to give you a ride yet. The reindeer stomped again. Piper held out a handful of carrots in her palm. Can we keep him, she asked. If he can fly, Santa said. Piper gave a toothy grin. I'll teach him. I'll name him Stomper. Santa laughed. I think Stomper is a good name. Let's finish feeding the other reindeer. I have to work in the toy shop today. Christmas is two weeks away and I need to make a special gift. Piper asked her friends to help take care of Stomper. Joy brought him carrots. Miles filled the water bucket. Candy and Nikki brushed his fur. Each day, Piper tried to mount Stomper, but the reindeer stamped his hoofs until she fell off his back. Miles shook his head. Stomper will never lift the sleigh off the ground. Will Santa let Stomper stay if he can't fly, Joy asked. Piper sighed and lowered her head. No, she said. Piper wondered if Stomper would ever fly. One day, Santa walked by the corral with an empty sack slung over his shoulder. Where are you going? Piper asked. Glacier Valley. Would you like to join me? Are you taking the old sleigh or walking? Piper said. Santa patted his belly and laughed. Let's walk. Mrs. Claus will be happy if I exercise. Can Stomper come? Sure, Santa said. Grab your snowshoes. When they reached Glacier Valley, Santa, Piper, and Stomper trudged through the deep snow to the field of shimmering pine trees. What are we looking for? Piper asked. Santa stopped as they neared the bright green pine trees. Pine cones. Pine cones, Piper asked. Santa dug in the snow and found a twinkling golden pine cone. These pine cones have tiny seeds in the center. When you shake the cones, they jingle like bells. Mrs. Claus is making collars with the pine cones. I'll attach the collars to the reindeer 
before we leave on Christmas Eve. Stomper grunted and ran to a herd of reindeer huddled behind the trees. Piper noticed the reindeer dancing around him. Stomper recognizes the reindeer, she said. Santa nodded. They're his family. Her smile faded as Stomper rubbed noses with the other reindeer. Piper watched Stomper and the herd gallop as she and Santa collected the pine cones. Finally, Santa's sack was full. Piper swallowed hard before speaking. We have to leave now, Stomper. Do you want to stay? The little reindeer trotted through the snow and slowed his steps as he joined Piper and Santa. I think Stomper wants to stay with you, Santa said. Piper swung her arms around the reindeer's neck and hugged him. During the next few days, everyone kept busy in the toy shop. The elves painted and wrapped toys. Mrs. Claus sewed pinecone collars for the reindeer. Santa finished making his special gift. Piper and the little elves struggled to teach Stomper how to fly. I give up, Joy said after Piper fell off the reindeer a fourth time. We're running out of time. Christmas is in three days. Miles raised his hands in the air. Face it, Stomper can't jump off the ground. Piper folded her arms. I want him on Santa's team. She looked into Stomper's dark blue eyes and said, please try to fly. But the reindeer stomped his hoof and shook his head. On the day before Christmas, Santa wrapped his special gift. Then he sat at the kitchen table and snacked on cookies. Piper rushed into the house. Stomper is ready to fly. Santa set the gift on the table and hurried to the corral. Piper mounted the little reindeer. She pulled on the reins. Come on, Stomper, fly. The reindeer grunted refusing to move. Finally, Santa gave Piper a warm smile. You can't force Stomper to fly. He's too young. Maybe next year he'll be ready. Tomorrow morning, we'll take him back to Glacier Valley to stay with his family. Tears filled Piper's eyes, but we're his family. I can't use Stomper on my team if he doesn't fly, Santa said, come, it's time to pack the gifts. The elves worked for hours. By nightfall, the sleigh overflowed with presents. Next, Santa prepared the team of reindeer and fastened the new collars decorated with golden pine cones. The jingling sounds echoed through the air. Mrs. Claus and the elves cheered when Santa waved goodbye. Merry Christmas, Santa exclaimed as the sleigh disappeared in the midnight sky. Mrs. Claus invited the elves to her house for cookies and milk. She winked at Piper. I have carrots for Stomper. The elves walked to Santa's house. When Mrs. Claus opened the door, Piper gasped. On the table was a gift wrapped in gold paper and a red bow. Santa forgot his special gift, Piper said. Mrs. Claus sighed. Oh dear, someone's stocking will be empty. What can we do, Piper asked. Stomper stepped forward and pressed his nose against her arm. I'll get your carrots in a minute, Stomper. We have a problem, she said. Stomper nudged Piper again. Then he clamped his mouth on her hat and flung it out the door. Piper ran outside and brushed the snow from her hat. Stomper followed her and lowered his back. I think Stomper is trying to tell you something, Mrs. Claus said. Piper looked at the reindeer. Her, his bright eyes twinkled. She grinned. Are you ready to fly? Stomper grunted and nodded his head. 
Mrs. Claus dashed inside to get the present. How will we find Santa, Piper asked. Mrs. Claus packed the gift in a knapsack and gave it to Piper. Follow the bells, Mrs. Claus said. The sounds will lead you to the reindeer. Piper put the knapsack on, around her shoulder. Her hands trembled as she climbed on Stomper's back and grabbed the reins. The elves cheered as Stomper gained speed and lifted in the air. Piper listened for the bells. Soon she spotted Santa on a rooftop. Stomper landed next to the sleigh. Santa turned from the chimney and dropped his bag. Ho, 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 he said. Stomper can fly. Piper handed him the present. You forgot this. Stomper wanted to make sure you delivered your special gift. Santa unwrapped the box. He pulled out a shiny brown collar with golden pine cones. The gift is for Stomper, he said. Piper's mouth dropped. What? Stomper has a very big heart. I saw the kindness in his eyes the first day he came. I left the present on purpose because I knew he would want to help. He was afraid to fly until he thought a child wouldn't get a gift. Santa fastened the collar around Stomper's neck. You both can stay and help me tonight. Stomper is now on my team. Piper grinned as she clicked her heels and danced. She enjoyed being Santa's helper on Christmas Eve, but she was even more excited Stomper could stay. The little reindeer galloped to the front of the sleigh and shook his collar. The other reindeer swayed their necks. The pine cones jingled like a chorus of musical bells ringing bright melodies through the night. And that is the end. I hope you've enjoyed Piper the Elf Rides a Reindeer. And if you did, know that there are additional Piper the Elf books available with headline books, Amazon, and through my website. Thank you. Thank you so much, Colleen. You have the best reading voice ever. Oh, I you. want you to read so many books. <laughs> thank you. Uh, thank thank you. you for saying that. Oh, yeah, absolutely. So next up, um, also, before we do jump to the next one, if any of you have questions, just a reminder, um, if any of you have questions for our presenters, go ahead and put them into the chat. And if you would like to buy any of the books discussed today, there's also links here for that as well. So thank you very much, Colleen. And we are now going to Grant. You're up. Hey, how you doing? Great, great. Good to see you again. He's, he's happy to see everybody here. My little possum. <laughs> <laughs> that's great we always need we always need a companion especially now you know <laughs> yes especially now <laughs> absolutely well we're really excited for you to share your book with us today grant yeah. so go ahead and take it away okay well, i'd like to read the book to you fly possum fly subtitled the year my dad's possums really saved christmas it's a true story let's read it now Flip over to the first page. There we go. There's Santa Claus. One Christmas Eve he won't forget. Old Santa nearly pitched a fit when Rudolph came down with the flu. Well, he got weak and he turned blue. Reindeer cried and whinnied on that rooftop in Virginia. And it looked like Santa Claus was really through. See, Rudolph was so sick that he couldn't go on. He couldn't fly. So what, what would they could do? Christmas was underway. Well, my dad climbed up the ladder and he said, Nick, that just don't matter. I've got some friends with poor eyesight, but they can guide your sleigh all right. And look what's on his back. There's a little possum, just like the little stuffed one that I had a minute ago. My dad continued on and he said, even if it's snowing, just point them where you're going. I'll hook you up a passel here tonight. A passel is a group of possums. Look at that, they're already playing games. The little ones are always getting into trouble. 
but they uh, they have fun. Fly, possum fly, lift old Santa to the sky. Get those bags of toys to everyone. And the possums, I guess Santa put some of his magic dust on them and now they can fly and they can pull his sleigh. It's pretty amazing, isn't it? They're going all over the world. Fly, possum fly, nature's cleanup crew on high. You've got eight more hours to get it done. They're going pretty fast because there's only eight hours left of Christmas and they've got millions of presents to deliver to all the boys and girls. With curly tails and pointed snouts, 50 teeth and little mouths, they flew all night from hill to dale, delivering their special mail. And you can see the possums there, the one in the lead, he's got the curly tail. And then the one above and behind him is showing off his pointed snout. And the one who's kind of upside down at the bottom right of your screen, he's showing off all of his teeth. Possums have a lot of teeth. They have more teeth than any other animal that lives on the land. Jacks and Jills and Joeys, spurred by Santa's ho ho hoey, with true blue possum hearts, they could not fail. And you can see their possum hearts right there, and they are true blue. They're not going to let Santa down. Fly, possum, fly, lift old Santa to the sky. Get those bags of toys to everyone, and they just keep on flying. Oh, look, there's a super possum in this, in this group. Fly, possum, fly, nature's cleanup crew on high. By the way, I call them nature's cleanup crew because possums, they come out at night. Uh, you know, they're nocturnal. They, they go around the nighttime and they sleep during the day. And when, they, when they're out, they clean up nature. Like if there's bones on the ground, they'll, they will eat them and all kinds of stuff like that. They, they're like little, little nature's trash men. They clean up all the, all the stuff that gets left over in nature. But look, now they've only got six more hours to deliver all the presents. They better hurry up. From Illinois to Tennessee, from Muscle Shoals to Abilene, they flew all night on stardust tracks with babies on their mother's backs. And you can see there's a mother on the left there and she's got about, oh, how many? One, two, three, four, five babies hanging onto her, hanging on her back, flying through the sky. They better hold on. Fly, possum, fly, lift old Santa to the sky. Get those bags of toys to everyone. The reason I, I'm repeating some of these words is because there's a song I'm going to play for you after this, and the song has these words in it. I'll play it for you in a minute. Fly, possum, fly, nature's cleanup crew on high. Oh, no, you've only got four more hours to get it done. They better stop playing games up in the sky and <laughs> get back to delivering presents. <laughs> fly, possum, fly, lift old Santa to the sky. Get those bags of toys to everyone. Fly, possum, fly, nature's cleanup crew on high. You've got two more hours to get it done. I like the little baby possums playing there. And now they did, they did get it done. And so now they're celebrating playing some possum music. Now you know the skinny that right here in Virginia, we saved Christmas Eve, and that's a fact. I, I like the possum, the one on the far left, he's holding up a mandolin. Then next to him is one with a, a guitar, like kind of like the one I have right here. Then there's a possum with a big bass guitar. And then there's a possum hanging upside down playing a banjo. And super possums flying around the sky. So if we go to the last page, you'll see there's some possum facts. I won't read them all to you, but there's, there's lots of interesting facts about possums in the book here. That, so it's a little bit educational while it's also being fun and tells a good story about how my dad's possums really did save Christmas. I hope you hope everybody enjoyed that. We always enjoy hearing from you, Grant. Thank you for sharing your book. And now we will hear the musical stylings of Grant. <laughs> All right. Well, everybody, this song, this book really was a song at the beginning. I never dreamed of making it into a book, but 
but uh, here we are, we have a book. But I want to play you the song that inspired the whole thing. One Christmas Eve, you won't forget, old Santa nearly pitched a fit. When Rudolph came down with the flu, he got weak and he turned blue. Reindeer cried and whinnied on that rooftop in Virginia. And it looked like Santa Claus was really through. My dad climbed up the ladder. He said, Nick, that just don't matter. Well, I've got some friends with poor eyesight. They can guide your sleigh all right. Even if it's snowing, just point to where you're going. I'll you up a castle here tonight. Fly, awesome, fly, lift old Santa to the sky. Get those bags of toys to everyone. Fly, awesome, fly, nature's clean up through all night. You've got eight more hours to get it done. With curly tails and pointed snouts, 52 through little mouse. They flew on from hill to dale, delivering their special mail. Jackson, Jill's, and Joey's furred by Santa's ho, ho, ho. With true blue possum hearts, they could not fail. Fly, awesome, fly, lift old Santa to the sky. Get those bags of toys to everyone. Fly, awesome, fly, nature's clean up through all night. You've got six more hours to get it done. From Illinois to Tennessee, from Muscle Shoals to Abilene. They flew all night on starter's tracks, babies on their mother's backs. So now you know the skinny hat right here in Virginia. Be safe, Christmas Eve, and that's a fact. Fly, awesome, fly, let go, Santa, to the sky. Get those bags of toys to everyone. Fly, awesome, fly, nature's And they got it done. Yes, they did. <laughs> and as I said before, I can hear the applause echoing across Facebook. As oh, yeah, I'm sure there's millions of people. There are well, millions, <laughs> millions. Yes, thank you so much, Grant. We always love hearing your story and hearing your song. And I should also mention that you also illustrated your own book. Um, I did which is really neat and i'm sure that people would be interested to hear about that process of how you wrote and illustrated your own book and composed the song yeah, do you want me to do a little one minute on that yeah. well i wrote the song first like i mentioned and then uh a friend of mine fred anderson said you know this would be a very cute uh children's book and i thought i don't write children's book i'm i play music i don't know how to make a children's book but uh, he talked me into it and it was a very good idea. So I was an artist before I was a musician. So I sort of had to go back and brush up on my cartooning skills a little bit. But I used watercolor and I used pen and ink and, and then uh, headline books. Wonderful publisher out of West Virginia made it into a real book. And so it's, it's been a wonderful experience. I love meeting. I can't wait till we get over this coronavirus thing so we can get back out and I love signing and drawing little pictures for all the, all the children that come and buy the books at the, at the book fairs. I can't wait to do that again. It's going to be so much fun. Yes, but if, you, so if anybody fun. does order it, I will draw a picture for you and, and I'll sign it and all that kind of stuff. Yes. And that's, you know, something special that you can add. It's another layer of involvement um, when you're also the illustrator. So that is a segue into our next thing. Um, I am going to read a book this time. Um, this book is written by Ellen Schubert, and I had the pleasure of working on um, her illustrations with her. And um, it was funny, I was working on this book when it wasn't Christmas time. So, because, you know, we wanted it to be out for Christmas. So I got to work on Christmas illustrations throughout the year, which was really nice. So this is Beasley and the Big Guy in Red. And I should mention that Beasley is a real dog. This is based off of a true story. Um, Ellen had this dog named Beasley, and Beasley was a character. 
like a lot of our pets, part of the family. And uh, so this is about Beasley's Christmas adventure. On the night before Christmas, everyone slept without a sound, except for Beasley, the Basset Hound. She tried and she tried, but she just couldn't sleep. Not a moment before, she got just one peek. She had heard about a jolly man all dressed in red, you know, the one who rides in the sled. She heard that he brings presents to all who believe. He brings them on a special night called Christmas Eve. She waited and 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 still no one came. And this one was really fun to work on because none of these little scenes were ever mentioned. Um, there were no like art notes or anything. So I was able to um, kind of come up with the things that I wanted Beasley to do. And so I was trying to think of things that I like to do when I wait. So I read, I eat a lot of ice cream, um, and around Christmas time, I string a lot of popcorn. So I brought a little bit of myself into Beasley here. She was starting to believe it was all just a game. She fell fast asleep and was beginning to snore when she heard a faint noise outside the front door. She opened one eye and perked up an ear and said to herself, could Santa be here? She ran to the window to look out and see, but instead lost her balance and toppled into the tree. She stood and she watched as the, as the tree swayed to and fro. The ornaments fell one by one, crashing to the floor below. Unable to move, she timidly looked around. Broken bulbs and branches scattered at her big feet. She knew this was not the night she and Santa would meet. She ran to her room and hid under the bed until she was sure Santa was riding away in his sled. When she thought it was safe, she opened her eyes, scooted out from under the bed and peered up to the sky. That's when she saw it as she shook her big head, eight tiny reindeer pulling a man in a sled. The man they call Santa looked down below. He started to laugh a jolly ho, ho, ho. This is called a turn spread. So when you're actually looking at the real book, um, you would turn this so that the book was on its edge. And that's something that's really fun in illustration because it allows the reader to get involved with the, the actual physical form of the book, which is really neat. So everybody could just turn their heads for this particular one. The house with the tree that fell to the ground, the one with the ornaments scattered around, he'd picked up the tree that laid in a mound and smiled to himself at the sight of the hound. And Beasley is hidden in this picture. So whenever you have the book in front of you, you can try to find it, find him. Her. Although Beasley had tried to stay out of sight, Santa had seen her in the room that night. She saw the bed shaking and lift up off the ground and stuffed underneath was that silly Basset Hound. So she's hiding. Santa stifled a laugh and went back to his sled, and Beasley, well, she eventually fell asleep under the bed. Early the next morning, she woke with a start. She tried to stand up and broke the bed clean apart. She ran to the room, the room with the tree. Oh, please let there be a present for me. She could not believe after all she had done, her present under the tree was the biggest one. At that moment, she promised she would always be good. At least she would try, that is, if she could. When Riley woke up and gave Beasley a hug, she noticed some ornaments lying on the rug. At least Beasley tried to clean up the mess. She knew at that moment, although it could not have been easy, the tree had been moved and it had not been Beasley. Beasley let out a giggle that, and then fell fast asleep, thinking about the secret she would always keep. Who would ever believe all the things she had seen? Did it really happen or was it only a dream? The end. 
it was a fun book to work on. Again, I love Christmas and it's, it's really fun to be able to work on Christmas artwork, um, not around that time of year, because it just kind of keeps the spirit alive a little bit. And I've heard across social media that there's a lot of people who have begun celebrating Christmas uh, already, which I'm in full support of because we deserve it, <laughs> I think, collectively. <laughs> so whatever holiday you celebrate, if it's Christmas or whatever other holiday um, that, that you celebrate, just start now. <laughs> So we, yes, absolutely. So speaking of 2020 and the year that we have had, you know, we've had some downs, but we've also had some ups. And with our conference, one of our goals for this, and I've said this on several other sessions, but it still rings true. Um, we're trying to end 2020 on a high note. You know, we've got to look at the silver lining. We've got to stay positive and work together. So we would love it if you all would share a positive experience that um, you have had during the pandemic. And uh, Grant, since you went last during the presentation, we'll start with you. I mean, something good that happened? Yes, yeah, something good that happened that you didn't say the last time I asked you this question. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't remember what I said, but good. it's, it's going to have either. to be the same answer. The true answer is that you know, normally in a year, uh, like we all go to the book fairs and also I play music and, and shows and travel all around the country. Well, that didn't happen this year. Back in March, I had to stop because everything stopped. And so I had a lot of free time to finish a record I've been working on for a long time, which I just did. I just finished it the, uh, yesterday. And so that, that's very exciting. I also made a music video with a hundred other musicians uh, that are in a kind of a group that I'm in. And we put that out on YouTube. It's got thousands of views. So I think 15 or 16,000 views so far. And uh, I've been able to do a lot of things that if I was traveling around, I just wouldn't have had the time to do. So there's always a silver lining. Yes, there is. And that's definitely one of them. How about you, Colleen? Something positive that happened to you during the pandemic? And I don't remember what you said the last time I asked, I asked you this question either. <laughs> yeah, I don't know uh, what I said. Um, the biggest thing for me, I mean, I always had time to write since everybody was down, but I have four kids and everyone's been home, well, at least through the summer till my daughter had to go to work again. Um, just having those four, five, six months of everyone teleworking at my house. The grocery bill was high, but everything else, it was great. It was, we played games, we played cards, we got to watch movies together with the whole family. So I, yeah, that was the best positive thing that came out of it. That's great. And you know, it's, we've never really had that before and hope, you know, if we have that again, hopefully it's because of a better, you know, yes. a better set of yes. but that is wonderful time that you do get and because uh, everybody's so busy all the time. So right. that's Correct. good to hear. Uh, Diana, what about you? Something positive that, and I've also asked you this question, I think before too, but again, I don't remember what you said. So <laughs> I don't remember this question, but I think um, top of my list would be that it has um, made you make time for people and for family and friends that you don't normally talk to. I've been in touch with people I've graduated with, um, cousins that live in Italy. You know, you just make time and you get this one-on-one -on -one time with Facebook Live or Facebook um, Messenger or with um, Skype. And it's really a forced, forced me to appreciate the time that we did have together. Yes, I 100% agree. I think that this has given all of us a wake-up call, then we can move on to a better, more thankful normal would be nice. Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> so from Headline Books, we would like to thank our three presenters, our amazing authors for joining us today. And um, we wish you all a safe and happy Thanksgiving. For those of you watching, same to you. Hope that you have a joyous holiday season. And again, if you're looking for Christmas gifts, um, you know, we're celebrating Christmas early, so maybe we'll actually start Christmas shopping early too. That would be nice. I will maybe try to do that myself. So if you are looking for some gifts, um, there are links here in the comments for um, the website where you can get the, the books from. So again, thank you all so much for joining us and we hope that you will join us in the new year on Zoom Into Books again. Merry Christmas, Bye. everybody. Merry Christmas. Happy Thanksgiving. Bon Natale.